wasting some time here with uh, something a bit different. Uh, so we had the 5.6 update come out today. I'm probably going to have this uploaded late tonight by the time it's rendered and whatnot. But I was going to go ahead and give y'all my opinion about uh, which ships, premium ships, that are now available for uh, purchase with the balloons. Uh, for folks who may be in the market for said uh, things. Out of all of them, I mean, I'm not even going to cover the two, the Campbell Town or, or the uh, Diana or the Emden or the or the Tacabana. Those aren't really my speed. I, I have uh, the Tacabana and the Emden. Not really impressive. I probably wouldn't uh, tell anybody to get it. If you already have those, you're probably just a, a crazy uh, collector of ships like myself. Uh, and you probably won't be stopped from getting it. Anyways, uh, out of all the ships that are available, I would probably recommend the Turpets. I think it is the uh, the easiest ship to play. Uh, it's really forgiving uh, for the most part. Really hard to sit it out. It's only they don't show the uh, red paint. Uh, even a hard overturn, close range, you're probably not going to be Citadel. And of course, like something like a, a Yamato can uh, just Citadel you for for the fun of it uh, because they got that amazing penetration uh nice they did buff the a a uh, just a little bit in it. it was kind of something that was a weak on the uh the turpets slightly of course they buffed a lot of ships aa uh some of the american battleships aa is just kind of silly now uh like the texas we'll get to that though it's a good ship it's nice fast renewable forgiving and uh can you can do well in it uh other other ships of note the mikhail oh yeah the turpets is for 12,500 credits, if, uh, not credits, doubloons. If I had to tell anybody to get one, I'd probably get that one. Or you can always get the Otago, which is, is my personal favorite out of all, all these, if that's your, your speed. Uh, but this is a good, uh, kind of do anything. Most people can play it decently, at least. Uh, and Mikhail, going down to the next on the list, it's 10,250 uh, to balloons to get the Mikhail. It's a it's a good ship, the Mikhail. If I can find it, no, goodness, coots off. I'm looking for Mikhail. I'm like, I'm sitting here. You you just experienced me having a freak out moment. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> Uh, the Mikhail, I've, I've played it a little bit. I have a, a few battles in it. Enough uh, free XP on the thing to purchase some crazy stuff. It's a good ship. I really do like the smoke. Uh, it's a bit harder to play. If you've played up to at least the shores, uh, you will realize you don't have any effective armor. Uh, or even like the Kirov, you don't have armor with this. It's not something to be relied upon. Uh, you can't engage one cruiser at a time as long as you don't have a good uh, angle on you. And if you uh, go bow in, you can uh, usually kill those guys. Or if you just want to slow down, pop your smoke, that's an option too. If you know how to use the uh, equivalent tier Russian cruisers, you'll be okay with it. Mikhail. If you like these cruisers, you want a captain. Of course, there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Russian premium ships. It's just kind of silly at this point. I think they have the most five. Uh, yeah, eh. and the Kutsov, Molotov. Uh, kind of similar as far as being weak. Of course, Molotov has uh, harder hitting guns by far. Murmansk, it's always a good option if you're just kind of going middle of the road. And uh, it's always for sale, I think. It's always for sale. <laughs> uh, but it's a good ship. It's not bad. A lot of people didn't like it at first, but, I mean, the AA is nice. And uh, you can get some decent game. That range and escorting people is really the way to play the Mikhail. Um not not the best one out of offering the war spite uh 6500 doubloons is a fun ship if a bit slow uh has a nice tight turning circle decent rudder shift time and if uh, you get into a, a bit of trouble you can go bow in against other battleships and it can be kind of trolly it's actually something I'm gonna go back to the turpets real quick if you get too close to people the turpets can have can be a bow on ship uh it, it really really can uh, sometimes it is just better to run up to somebody and torp them really, really close range, less than a kilometer or two. Uh, but yeah, the, the turpets can go and bow in and just deflect a lot of shots. Not from something like the Yamato, though. Back to the uh, war spite. It's a bit of a 
bit of a squirrel moment there. Um, but the war spite is a good ship. Uh, the turning time on the the turrets is, is painful. I have the captain skill for that, so it's down like 56 seconds, I think. Uh, but man, it's 72 seconds stock, which ties the Yamato for turn time. You can make up with it with the uh, turning, uh, with the actual turn time, and you can actually kind of just turn your turrets into it. If you're engaging an enemy battleship, uh, this top turret, you don't want to use it. Just use three or just the front two. Those are your best options there. Because uh, you don't want to give that side. If you give that side, they will get some nice uh, Citadel hits into you. There's a really, it's a big engine room. And you do have these uh, two super fighting, firing turrets that are close together. That's uh, other easy Citadels when you get a, give them broadside. That's uh, most ships though. Um, if I were going to go for this speed, honestly... I would pick the Texas over the War Spite, and the Texas is a bit cheaper at 5150 instead of uh, 6500 doubloons. And they also just increase the AA on the thing just to make it just silly. I mean, so this has a uh, average AA, so it's 45 the rating. So you have uh, 38, 79, and 40. It's not not great. It's not bad. It was actually pretty good, uh, but the Texas just comes along. And just kind of smacks it out of the water with the AA defense rating of 60. That's not even with a good captain in it with uh, any kind of uh, the advanced firing training like I have on the War Spite. Uh, but 159 at 4.2 kilometers, there's, they're not going to get close to you. And if you put a good captain on this thing, let me go to other ships. Let's put our, put our Iowa captain on here. I think he may be the best to have for AA at the moment with advanced firing training. Goes up to 71, and the ranges go out just even farther, 5.1. They're not going to get close to you with their uh, planes, and it's nice and cheap. Around the same speed, uh, rudder shift time not as quite as good. I mean, you're two knots slower than the War Spite, but I, I do think it is a, a very viable option, and this is why the AA increase. They put... Uh, Six uh, 20 millimeters, I think, on here, on each of them. Yeah, on each uh, turret, the top turret. Front and back. Nice ship, uh, and I may be biased because I am from Texas, obviously. The Bliskawitka. Bliskawitka. Uh, if you're looking for... The only problem I have with Bliska, it's a fun ship. I like it. It's just kind of the same thing with the War Spite. There's no benefit as far as captain training on it at the moment because that's the only one in the line well minus the camel town now for the uh, british line the bliska is just not uh worth it all the time to spend a lot of time in it it makes decent money I haven't played too many battles in it uh you can the big bonus for this for for the bliska for me at uh 4800 doubloons kind of cheap for a tier seven you can make decent money you can have fun i would go for the bliska over the sims and the Atlanta in a heartbeat. If I had to play, if I had to pick one to play for any extended amount of time, I would drop those just, just so quick. It's <laughs> about to start cursing. Anyways, it's a fun ship. It can stealth fire, brand new out of the box, which that's a really big uh, highlight for me. And I think you can stealth fire out to uh, a one eleven point one. I think uh, my captain. I don't have the advanced firing training yet. But I will be getting that to uh, boost it out a bit more. But yeah, the, the Bliska, man. It, uh, it's a good ship, but yeah, my one problem is that you just have the one ship in the line. It doesn't really do you any good for the rest of your captain training. Uh, 4,800 doubloons, though, tier 7. And that uh, money income, three or 400,000 on a, on a decent game. And really reduced uh, repair costs and rearming costs. The guns are a bit small at 120s. Uh, so they do get the obviously the benefit of the advanced firing training but they do have a they're kind of in between as far as shell velocity uh in between uh, 900 actually that's the initial shell velocity but it seems like it takes a while to get out there kind of in between the american shell velocity and like the japanese shell velocity a bit not as wondrous as the uh the russian destroyer shell velocity but it, it definitely hittable uh, enemy ships you can definitely get a lot of fire into them especially uh getting the the uh, stealth firing on the max speed 39 knots is i mean it's hard to not have fun when you're going fast 
anyway, so there's uh, those ships from the Molotov. I already, already made that uh, video about the Molotov. I like it. It's not going to be for everybody. And they did actually boost the Molotov's uh, AA. They put uh, uh, some nice guns on the turrets there. Uh, it does help a bit. I was going to test it out, uh, but it's not quite as bad as it was. I think it was 28, if I recall correctly. And now it's 37. A slight increase. Uh, you're not really going to save yourself if you're in a bad position and caught out by a enemy carrier. Uh, if I was going to spend anywhere around the four to five thousand, I'd probably go with the Texas or the Bliska. If I was going to go out, I'd go with the Turpets or the Otago. The Mikhail's okay, but it's a bit uh, tougher to play than the Otago. Anyways, and uh, I'm going to talk about a few other things. We're going to go talk about the Furtaka. Major changes on ships. And a major change has happened for the Furataka. You get the uh, the top hull configuration. You now get super firing turrets in the front. You get uh, three double uh, double turrets, two in the front, one in the back, just like it's uh, Big Brother of the Oba. This is like uh, the Oba Light now. It's a really fun ship. I like it now. It uh, it seems combat. It's like combat capable. It's it's not uh, it's not terrible anymore. <laughs> Because it, it was pretty pretty bad. They've buffed it a few times. I think this is the, the final iteration it needed to make it a decent ship for the majority of players who play it. The only thing that this thing really doesn't have going for it is... Uh, well, only thing. The AA is not great. It's, uh, it's just not good. 23. If you're seeing a Tier 6 or a Tier 7 aircraft carrier and they want you gone, they can give you a really hard time, kind of like the, the Molotov. Uh, you do have a really nice rudder shift time, a decent turning circle, not great, 750, kind of big, uh, but that rudder shift time will definitely help, and a nice speed. Um, I don't have a very good captain on here, obviously, but the detection range is 11.9. It's, it's a good ship, but the main thing is the main, fat, main battery firing. It's only 13, but of course your detection range at least doesn't exceed your firing range, so nobody's going to see you before you can shoot at them, unless the destroyer's you know, doing a, some sneaky spotting on you. Uh, so I really, I actually took it out. I had fun. I couldn't say that before about playing the Furutaka. Uh, other major changes. I'm not going to show you any gameplay. We're going to get to some gameplay of uh, New <laughs> the North Carolina and the Iowa I took out. Uh, the Hipper got a final uh, hull upgrade. I, you know, it's uh, got a few more guns. And the, uh, the Hipper, the Rune, and the Hindenburg all got AA buffs. The North Carolina, Iowa, and Montana got significant AA buffs. And uh, we're going to go hop into a battle, or a little bit of a battle on each, and talk about them. Alright, and we're back. Well, not back. I, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, here's my North Carolina battle. Uh, this chappy decided he wanted to stop in front of me. I'm okay with that. I'll allow it. Uh, and if you notice the dispersion on these, this, these three shots are just uh, pretty good. Uh, this Moscow is about to sit it on me too. Don't go, don't go sailing broadside to a Moscow. But I really liked. Uh, you can tell that the shells are more accurate. Uh, they decreased uh, the range difference, and what was that? I think it was called the Sigma. Uh, so it's a lot better now. There's a Citadel into the Moskva. Hanging back. Shots over the mountain. Uh, the mountain indicator it works for the most part. And uh, you kind of notice the map. I'm out here by myself. Two Citadels into that Moskva. The accuracy of these guns, man. It, uh, I had fun in the North Carolina. I had fun in the Iowa, too. That hasn't happened in a while. Dodge these torpedoes. Try to uh, make like a baby and head out of here. Go to the next clip here. And, uh, yeah, kind of just fighting around the same spot on this map. And just really just to show you all uh, basically the increased accuracy with the guns. I I had, a, I think it's 144,000 damage. Uh, not a great game. Nothing I would, I would put on, on the channel. But definitely just trying to test things out and see the improvement for you all. Uh, the AA, no, no planes to test this. But significant uh, buffs to the AA. And definitely a buff to the... Uh, how far the back turret can turn, I think. If I am correct on that. This uh, Shimikaze is coming after me, shooting at this Mogami, and the turret's coming around. A lot of ships coming around at us here. Uh, 
Shim Kazis. Uh, both these videos, man, these uh, Shimmas really have a really, really have a thing for trying to kill me. Uh, thankfully, I dodge all their torpedoes. Kind of a getting pretty good at it most of the time. This guy's at 12,000 health. Turn the other gun here. And the firing and go off the back of the ship is really nice. And nice, nice hit there. And just uh, more shuttle damage. <laughs> and just a really trolly uh, last shot from my secondaries there. Go to the next clip in just uh, a minute here. To keep up here. Keep up! It's the first time I've been trying to break down an entire match into a short segment, so bear with me. That guy has an interesting name. I am coming for you. Okay. No, thank you, sir. Shots out. Nice damage into the guy. Firing high into his uh, armor so we don't hit that belt and not do anything. This Mogami. What are you doing, Mogami? Trying to do a slow, sneaky turn so he wouldn't uh, get hit, but... No. No, you get hit. <laughs> Anyway, so and there's a actually my first uh, cyclone that I actually experienced, and that Mogami we're gonna cut to a, a few minutes later, and that same Mogami still chasing me. I turned around, basically I just cut the turn around out, uh, coming for this Mogami. Cyclone's not all the way in effect yet. I just kind of wanted to get turned around so I could face him. Get over here. And the Cyclone's in effect. This is the first match, like I said, that I actually had Cyclone, so that was cool. Uh, I thought it was a neat effect. I actually did an, end up being uh, torped <laughs> to death by one of those turpets that just ran up on me. And, uh, yeah, I was surrounded by those two turpets. They, they had chased me all, all the way out here, south side. My team's all the way on the uh, north side, so. Poor planning. Makes an emergency on my part here. And, oh, side note, I really, really do like the uh, new uh, bloom effects for the uh, for the minimap and for the actual gun range firing and non-firing like as far as visibility the secondary firing range really cool too and that's a decent shot the other two were not turn it away from this guy he's gonna he's gonna turn here in a second to try to get those torps out we got uh Put out some nose on that. We don't want that happening. The speed boost on the North Carolina and the Iowa is really nice. Uh, I actually put the speed flag on my Iowa so I go 34.6 knots just for fun. Putting on the brakes, putting on the speed, trying to mess up his uh, torque solution here. Get a nice Citadel hit. Just the guns feel so much better. Uh, they seem like they've been kind of frustrating to me anyways for a bit. Managed to dodge these torpedoes and on to the uh, Iowa gameplay here. And there we are, Iowa. Um, this is my sneaky Iowa. You can see a really good. Uh, if you watch the mini map for just a little bit, you see a, a good example of the reticle bloom. You can see the blue line expanded out really far. Shots out on this turpets and. Three hits, no damage though, but uh, yeah, the, the, the shots that are, they just seem way more accurate, like I've been saying. And the AA, the AA on these things, just silly. Like the five airplanes I shot down, they weren't even close to me. <laughs> they were, you know, 7.2, you can see on the, red, the circles there, 2.9, 5.1, and 7.2 for my uh, actual, actual uh, AA ranges there. And trying to turn back over, you see my the mini map just the bloom went down really far, I'm not spotted anymore. Detected by air though. And more torpedoes front. Gotta speed up and try to get in between those torpedoes. That the Shimikaze on the enemy team, he ba I really think he won it for for the enemy. We did lose. I mean, no spoiler alert, really. I'm just uh, trying to show you all the, the better firings of the guns, man. It, Feels like a big, big boost for me. Anyways, and I just played one match on each, and I think it was noticeable. Could be confirmation bias, uh, but I haven't had fun in the Iowa in a while, honestly. And it does seem fun again with the AA uh, increase. 
and the uh, accuracy increase. If I see if I can explain what they increased on the accuracy, not the uh, side to side accuracy as the actual range. So you're not undershooting or under overshooting shots. Decent hit into that enemy Iowa. Turn it away a little bit. Next, uh, next bit. This is the better part of the battle. That I, I was stuck maneuvering for a lot of the match. Honestly, it's kind of that's an excuse, but <laughs> it's just it's what happened. I, this guy was launching so many torps at me. Shots out on Pensacola. And just the, the range accuracy, not over undershooting or overshooting in these two ships, is so much better. Uh, the Montana also received that buff. I don't have it, obviously, because I'm a gigantic scrub. Uh, but, man, it's just uh, when you shoot at things, you hit them now if you're halfway accurate. Shots out on that Zao. <laughs> just look at, the, look at the wonderful... I mean, that was an overpin on that last one, but that nice citadels are just so tasty. That was my first citadel on the map, actually, on the match, actually. I was, and I'm going to be uh, dodging here again. This Shimikaze just stalked me the entire match. This is after he killed most everybody, though. Anyways, not too much uh, left of the game. Anyways, just... Uh, Really enjoying uh, higher tier battleships for the Americans again. Feel kind of like the accuracy, like the Imagi and the uh, Izumo have. Makes a big difference. Anyways, if y'all like this kind of kind of thing, uh, an update and a uh, bit of gameplay showing the updated things, let me know. And I will see y'all next time.